Hey, Sammy fam, and welcome to my couch. Today we are trying wasabi Cheetos, and I'm apprehensive, I'm scared. That's why I have Almond Breeze with vanilla here. Thankfully, my wife had us buy this, and it's delicious, it tastes like melted ice cream. So if it becomes too hot, you know, I got an out. Um, I got a whole bunch of other snacks, and this is my Tokyo treat box. Ooh, but first, go ahead, please hit that like and subscribe button. Like and subscribe. There's gonna be a whole bunch more burger recipe videos. Uh, I got some awesome new pizza re pizza recipes. Pizza recipes I want to share with you guys. Um, and even some creative egg rolls because I bought too many egg roll wrappers and I'm doing some wild stuff with them. So stay tuned for those in the coming weeks. But let's see what we got in here. There's a whole bunch of snacks uh, shipped from Tokyo. Um, you can see this is the Sakura edition because this was shipped in April, apparently. And then it just sat in Japanese post office for months because of big Rona. A whole bunch of paper I don't really care about. I'm gonna get straight to the food. And oh my God, look at this one on top. Japanese Kit Kats are like one of my favorite things, guys. My wife and I go to like the Japanese and Asian markets around New York City all the time, or back when that was something that you could do. And uh, we would buy tons of all the different flavors of Japanese Kit Kats, or as much as we could justify it, because they come in these little, little bags, um, and they cost like $10 if I remember. But I mean, they're shipped from Japan, so I understand. But these are Sakura Mochi flavor. That sounds super delicious. You know what, I'm just go ahead and have one of these. Cannot wait. So cute. Isn't that the cutest little packaging? I love it. Delicious pink Kit Kat. I'll give you guys a close up here. It's been super hot around here, even though I got, got an air conditioner installed. Oh, it's still a little melty. Mmm. But they're delicious. I actually don't really like mochi flavor in a lot of things. But this, like, cherry light tea flavor is goddamn delicious and probably the best Kit Kat I've ever had. Oh my God. I'm so sad these were a limited edition. Maybe they'll have them again next year too, but get to Japan in the springtime, get some of these or go to like, I'm at an Asian market. That's one of the best things I've ever tasted. Worth the three month wait to get this, this box in the mail. Oh, here we go. I don't want to ruin my palate, you know, for the rest of the snacks I got right now, so I'm going to save these for a little bit. These are the wasabi Cheetos. Maybe the cheese will, like, temper the flavor, you know? You got the little wasabi plant and the cheddar right there. But I think this is going to put, you know, Red Hot Cheetos to shame that Americans are always so wild about. Wasabi Cheetos, what's up? Save that for later. Let's get into some of the more. Let's get us a drink out. I got some kind of nectar here. It looks like peach. Actually, I have a pamphlet about everything. Sakura scented nectar peach. This spring exclusive version of Japan's most popular peach juice combines white peach puree and Japan grown Sakura extract for a sweet and elegant taste and plenty of pulp or refreshing spring taste. Plenty of pulp, I should probably shake it then. Goddamn delight. That's lovely. Deserves a more elegant treatment. Oh 
yes. I think this actually benefits from being warm, sitting in this box for weeks. Because the flavor is very subtle. You're getting the peach that you all know. And then that Sakura cherry on top of it. Kind of the same as the... The Kit Kat. Mm. But if it was cold, you wouldn't be able to pick up that one as much, you know? Oh, I love it. What next? We got everybody's favorite, Pocky. And this, of course, is another spring-themed Sakura Pocky flavor. I can figure out how to open this packaging. Cute individual packs. I'll try to keep your snack size limited, but that will not stop me. Pretty good. I'm mainly just getting white chocolate flavor and the saltiness of like the pretzel style stick they use. There's a little bit of the Sakura cherryness coming through, but it's mainly just white chocolate. And then I know these are supposed to be kind of like a salty sweet treat, but the saltiness just seems a little weird with that flavor profile. Mm. I could take or leave the Pocky. I'll eat it, you know, over time. Definitely. That's not an issue. Because I just get hungry in the middle of the night. Before bed, and when I wake up in the morning, before breakfast, after breakfast, before lunch and after lunch. I just need snacks. This is a banana man. So this is a banana flavored snack and I have this thing about bananas. I enjoy actual bananas. I do not like things that are banana flavored or even just made with real bananas. Like banana bread's made with real bananas. I still don't like it for some reason. It was a marshmallow like confection, but it is um, covered in this banana crust. Hope you guys can see that banana crust there. And it has a tiny chocolate dot in the center, like a little chocolate butthole. I don't know what that's about. It's fine. The banana flavor is actually kind of tame, so. You know what, Banana Man? I'm down, I wouldn't buy you, but sure. And we got more smushy, smushy candy here. Some kind of uh, marshmallow treat. A mash row. Sweet, soft, and chewy. Mash row is a fluffy Japanese marshmallow with cute pastel colors that remind you of the spring flowers blooming. I don't know if that reminds me of spring flowers blooming. He has more of the coloration of like a winter holiday. It's blue and white going on. It's fun and stretchy. All right, macro. You taste like a marshmallow. Oh, what do you do? I mean, it's fine. It's not Japan specific, but. Pandoro, this is a panda cracker. I mean, it's not made of panda. It's a cracker cookie shaped like a panda. Pretty sure. See? Oh, I'm getting my fill of sweets for today. Mmm. It's like a shortbread. It's super buttery. This is reminding me of my grandma. She was a, um, Well, she was like a Francophile, but she was also really into English stuff. And she loved, um, what's that brand of shortbread? Walkers or something? I remember she would always have like tins of those around Christmas. 
think these shortbread panda, that was delicious. I like shortbread because it doesn't need to taste like anything special. It just tastes like butter. And that's enough. Because butter, good butter is made. Okay, these are curry fries and you no, know, I started opening them right away because they are amazing. Look at the wonderful texture on these bad boys. Crispy, crunchy, lightly curry flavor. Honestly, I could take them being even more spicy. These are way better than the little, like packaged, packaged fries you find in the gas station in America or like at least to me, those are always like too fluffy. This this has a a dense crunch to it. You guys hear that? Let me do it again. I feel like a, a groundhog or a squirrel. This is getting that nut. Very good. Ooh, this is a soda gummy. It's difficult to open. Okay, encrusted in sugar, always a good sign. Mm, I'm gonna have to vacuum after this, I'm getting sugar everywhere. Somehow they've actually imparted a a fizziness to this. And it has a pleasant, pleasant tang. It balances the sweetness slightly, nicely. Good job, Japan. The turtles? What? This isn't made from turtles, is it? This is turtle crackers. This crunchy treat takes inspiration from nature. They have a gentle sweetness and take their name from the shape. Yeah, so they're not actually made from turtles, they're just crackers. As you can see in the close up here, they got like turtle shell shape to them. And they taste like corn nut. They have like a sugar. A sugar sheen to them. Good though, I just ate the whole thing. Oh, nice. There's so many savory things, I need something sweet again. Okay. This seems to be some kind of cookie. Some kind of bunny cookie. Salty full moon pond. Seen secure by moonlight is a truly beautiful experience. A steamed and crunchy full moon pond cracker. That sounds wrong. Won't create moonlight, but it is flavored with Okinawan salt. Okay, so I thought I was big in something sweet, but I picked a salty cracker. That's what most people call me. Oh, this is messy. It's like thick. It's like a thick cracker. Again, what most people call me. Look at that. It's just like, it's just like a fluffy cracker. I, I think what most people call me. The salt is very good. It's not just salty, like table salt or something. There's an added tanginess to it. I don't know if that's from the salt itself having a specific flavor or the cracker, but altogether, it works very well. Two crackers and a pasto, come on guys. That seems a little, that better not cost very much money. Caramel corn, this is a big pack of caramel corn. But isn't the packaging cute though before I destroy it?
Look at my bag full of caramel corn. Oh, it is rosy, rosy flavored here. Is this actually specially flavored caramel corn? This is Sakura milk. Oh yeah, I, I smelled that milk flavor. Mmm. Mmm. Warm. Warm milk flavored crunch. My favorite, my favorite treat, warm milk crunch. Okie dokie, let's. Vaguely caramelly, corny, crunchy, and a little milky, but not actually off putting. It's not off pudding. It tastes a little bit like a off pudding. Mm -hmm. And it's like that texture of material that I mean, it looks like uh, a packing peanut. But when you crunch on it, it just immediately melts in your mouth. Crunch then soft, crunch then soft. Fried mochi snacks have simple saltiness that will be hard to put down. Okie dokie. Take a peek. Take a look in a book. I'm still trying to clear out the sweetness of the corn. Maybe I should have a drink. They're just fried little crunchy nibbles. To me, it barely tastes like mochi. A little bit salty. Just another crunchy little, like, puffed corn treat. Here we go, something fishy. Tyrari crackers. Tyrari crackers are a slightly sweet and nostalgic snack. They come in the shape of little fish, connecting them to the new life that comes with the happy spring season. Uh -huh. This is not, this is, they need to go visit a goldfish factory because they gotta step up their game. Uh, I can tell it's a fish with some effort, but it's just like a cereal. It's still like a rice puff with um a slight sweet glaze to it. Not super exciting, but is this flavor like onions? Is this an onion snack? I'm just going to go into this one and then like look at what it is on the sheet later. This is an onion snack and it's goddamn delicious. It's goddamn delicious. Oh my god, onion balls? It's like Funyuns but better. Mr. Onion Snacks, a tasty onion soup flavored bite size snack. Okay. It's a light treat that can easily fit in a bag or pocket for a treat while you're taking a walk in the spring air. That was a reach to associate it with spring, but sure. I don't like them, so I'll let it slide. Is that little balls? Cool. Mr. Onion's little balls. Oh, one more before the dreaded wasabi Cheetos. This is chocolate umaibo. It's a chocolate crunchy corn snack. Why are these all crunchy corn snacks, Japan? I know y'all like corn snacks, but geez, let's make something different. Oh my gosh. I got like a booty hole. Out of the booty hole. But I eat booty hole, so I'm happy about it. Fine. It's just chocolatey corn snack. At least like the corn part is actually flavored like corn snack too. 
but overall kind of boring. Okay, now that my mouth is coated in protective chocolate, the Sabu Cheetos. Get a good look up inside here. Check out these Wasabi Cheetos. All right, let's grab a bite. Try the little boy first, play it safe. You can see it looks like normal Cheeto. And it tastes like when you're a little kid at a Japanese restaurant or getting grocery store sushi or whatever. And you're like, what's this green stuff, mommy? And you stick your whole dang old chopstick in there and you pull out a big gunk, big clump of gunk of green wasabi or imitation. You just put it in your mouth. And suddenly, you'll feel your sinuses starting to awaken. And slow heat is building your mouth. That is a weird thing about wasabi heat. It doesn't punch you in the face like a ghost pepper or something. Like, for me at least, it somehow attacks my nose first. I can feel the tingling deep inside my sinuses. But it's like, it also feels healthy at the same time. Like it's expanding on my airways. But maybe that's all my airways is being irritated. It's actually bad for me. But I feel refreshed. It reminds me of the time... Ooh, it does build. It reminds me of the time when I was in... Um, it was somewhere around Boulder, Colorado. There is a... Or this is the headquarters of Celestial Seasonings, the tea brand. Oh, it's like a factory or something. But they give tours. And they have one room. I think it's called the Peppermint Room. Where they store all the peppermint. We gotta get palette cleanser here. And you walk in that room and it's just like... Bam, your sinuses are clear. You're suddenly on another plane of existence. And you can, you know, you feel like you could take in the whole world through my nose. This isn't quite that powerful. They tamed it down a little bit. Oh, there we go. But still, Has a nice burn to it. A different burn than like say a hot Cheeto. I think on the list of Cheeto flavors I tried. Baked Cheeto, number one. Classic flavor, baked Cheeto. I prefer them to fried. Then you have this wasabi Cheeto. It tastes fresh, you know? It tastes like Gardeny in spring, and then I'm glad they put it in the spring box. And it has um, a bite and a heat to it, but it's not hurting you. It's a loving heat. And then after that is uh, Red Hot Cheetos, which I think are just hot to be hot, and they're not actually like great. All right, well, thank you for watching me. Matthew, who's the math? Make sure you guys are liked and subscribed. You can click down below if you want to get one of these. Um, yeah, and also the best, the best thing ever. It's these Kit Kats, they're amazing. See you guys next time.